Welcome back. Once again, adventurers, to Let's Play Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. In the last episode, Iron Tiger ran into two particular individuals, Bang Shishigami in the district of Ronin Gai, and more disconcertingly, Lychee Fei Ling in Orient Town. A uh, confrontation that Tega wasn't looking forward to, but knew he was going to have to deal with nonetheless. Fortunately, after said confrontation, uh, Tega was met by Jubei of the Six Heroes, who had no desire to actually see the confrontation play itself out, a sentiment that I and Tega shares wholeheartedly. But now there is one final location that we must go to in order to plant the retrieval intervention device uh, needed to actually uh, get Huckerman back to Sector 7. Which uh, means delving into enemy territory. Kokonoe is asking too much this time. But it is my job, after all. Indeed it is, Tega. Indeed it is. Thus, we must make our way to the cathedral at the very summit of Kagutsuchi. She says I have to set it up inside the library branch in Kagutsuchi. What the hell's going on? Is there not a single guard on duty? Indeed, not a platoon or posting to be found anywhere. Very ominous indeed. This place is too quiet. It's kind of creeping me out. Is this a trap? Or have they already found me? Um, I wouldn't necessarily discount that theory there, Tega, but um, it is still rather curious that there are no soldiers stationed anywhere in the headquarters. Hmm. And yet, believe it or not, we are far from alone in this place. I feel cold, vicious eyes on my back. I turn around and recognize the man standing before me, one of the library's most decorated heroes, in air quotes. That appellation can only describe one particular individual of the NOL. Huh. Not a single guard in the entire branch. Is this your doing, Red Devil? No, it is not, Mr. or rather, sorry, Major Jin Kisaragi of the Novus Orbis Librarium, hero of Akaruga, but then again I wouldn't expect a uh, NOL officer to actually believe that, considering the fact that we're from the rival group Sector 7. No, it was like this when I arrived. A most plausible lie. And you want me to believe that? Don't you think that's a little too convenient? Perhaps it is, but uh, this is unfortunately where uh, Jin actually shares certain qualities uh, along with Bang Shishigami. Both are stubborn and obstinate, even at the best of times, and they have a tendency uh, to act before thinking. Naturally. I wouldn't expect the murderer who needlessly slaughtered Akaroga's guardian to hear me out. And of course, uh, speaking of uh, Bang Shishigami, uh, Jin Kisaragi is the one who murdered his master. Guardian? Who's that? So he doesn't remember. I suppose he has no interest in someone he's already killed. I wonder if he feels any guilt at all for the people he's killed. Hmm. Given his uh, cold nature, I would uh, definitely say that's a possibility, although considering the weapon that he is currently wielding, there is actually more to this than meets the eye. You're too dangerous for your own good. I'm going to need to take you down. Take me down? <laughs> Funny. Then what are you waiting for? Indeed, I uh, hate to break it to you, Jin, but you are actually an obstacle impeding our path. And of course, uh, it is something to say this to a man who sees absolutely everything standing in his way as an obstacle, but uh, let's get this showdown on the road. Sector 7 versus the NOL. Iron Tago versus Jin Kisaragi. 
So even though Iron Taker has incredible strength and uh, powerful electromagnets, Jin does have the power of the Nox Nocturus Yukianasa at his disposal. The of fate is turning. And Jin's ice attacks can be uh, pretty lethal at the best of times. Rebel. One. And unfortunately, uh, there is going to be a bit of slowdown in this particular episode because uh, I'm not fortunate enough in that regard. Let's uh, see just how uh, powerful the uh, so called uh, major is, shall we? It actually is very powerful. Jun Kisaragi. That was pathetic. I guess that's the limit of a half-assed toy. Uh, once again, I'm going to say uh, this is a pot meets kettle situation there. You've got a twisted personality. But I can see why you've become a hero. I'm afraid my specs are no match for yours. Yeah, when... Uh... Jin decides to tap into the power of Yukianasa, he can be a truly terrifying force to be reckoned with. At least you were willing to face the truth, unlike those other scum. I like that. As a reward, I'll completely destroy you! Typical behavior from Jin Kisaragi, it seems. Jin's Noxanctorus, Yukianasa, is more powerful than I had anticipated. I don't think I can stand another one of those ice blasts. It looks like this is it for me. Unless, uh, Kokonoe manages to, uh, retrieve us with an intervention teleportation. What? Yeah. Or perhaps not. The shadow behind Jin leapt, but he was too fast for it. The creature slams into the empty floor, or against the empty floor, with an angry, garbled speech. That can only be one entity. Who the hell are you? Yeah, I called it. Uh, another creature that we weren't hoping to run into. The very creature that Lychee was looking for. The one known as Arakune. It's not going to respond to him. I recognize the shadow. He's the one Lychee's looking for. Though I guess he's referred to as Arakune now. He longed for the wisdom of the Boundary. He finally got it, but at the cost of his humanity. He's a pathetic excuse for a man of science, but he seems quite excited about something. That is because uh, Arakune is here for the same reason that Jin is, uh, although for, albeit for different purposes, uh, they're both here for Ragnar the Blood Edge. It would seem I don't have the time to play with you anymore, Red Devil. You lucked out. Yeah, only you would refer to this particular situation as luck. And so he goes. With a sneer, Jin sheathes his sword and heads off, deeper into the facility. 
Arakune is excited about something. Three guesses as to what that might be. Indeed. Arakune is seeking to consume the Azure Grimoire by consuming Ragnar. Well, of course, uh, Jin is hurrying off to actually uh, face off in its distant encounter with his estranged brother. So you've lost your ability to speak, and with it, your sanity. Forgive me, but I only know one way to save a monster like you. Even though this will definitely uh, destroy Lychee emotionally, because she still intends to save the man that Arakune once was. The least I can do is offer you a quick death. Rest in peace. I wonder if Lychee might intervene to save Arakune at the eleventh hour. Maybe, maybe not. <coughs> and I also wonder if Arakune recognizes who Tegu is, but then again I'm not holding my breath. But now, it is time to face off against Arakune, and hopefully we can do much better than we did against Jin Kisaragi. That much is certain. I'm sure we can hold our own against Arakune, although, uh, given the fact that Arakune does have the power of the boundary at his disposal, he can be a very formidable opponent. Not to mention his swarm of insects can actually be devastating. No. Play this cool and smart, and we can, uh, get out of this. Try and, uh, Get closer to us with the uh, electric magnets. Time for a power drive now. Try that. I am Tego style. You done? I dare you. Hammer. Nope. He's uh, too wily and ag agile for this. Tega moves like molasses. Oh, that's a curse. That's bad. That's bad. No, that's bad. I don't want to see insects crawling all over the screen. That's terrible. That is absolute um that is cancer on my screen. Ooh, and we actually managed to connect the uh the magnet tech wheel there. Which uh I was actually afraid that we might have actually, uh, he might have avoided it by jumping in the air. But, uh, we have managed to defeat Arakune. And good riddance, I suppose. Arakune's body is starting to fall apart. His mind and body are going. At least his end will be a quick one. Commiserations and apologies to Lychee, but there was no way of dealing with us any other way. I'll finish you off right now. It's collapsing? That could probably signify the awakening of the Murakumo unit, uh, New 13. Or maybe the, uh, satellite about to annihilate us all. The floor on the far side of the room has collapsed. There used to be a crane over there, but now it's just a huge hole. Maybe the uh, battle between Jin and Ragnar is uh, taking its toll. What the hell? I can hear someone groaning. They're getting closer. I can deal with Arakune later. I turn towards the hole. The only thing there is a pool of thick, absolute darkness. That's a terrible sign. It groans again and I see a pair of burning red eyes open in the middle of the darkness. That's even more of a worrying sign. Could this be the Black Beast? Indeed it could, Tega. Indeed it could. Well, it looks like, uh, instead of being thrown into the heart of the cauldron, uh, 
As per usual, it seems that uh, Nu and Ragna have merged together, the power of the Murakumo unit infused with the might of the Azure Grimoire, to create the entity known as the Black Beast. Instead of being sent back in time a hundred years, it's still here in the present. That uh, basically means that uh, one way or another, Kagutsuchi and everyone in it is absolutely doomed. It roars in response. Because uh, the only remaining six heroes are uh, Jubei and Hakuman, and even they at their best um, struggled to fight against the Black Beast the first time around. The red eyes turn towards me. I can't move. Is it terror, or is it something else? <laughs> and of course, Arakune is going crazy over the fact that the Black Beast is not only uh, made up of Seether, but um, also at the power of the Azure and the Boundary as well. Arakune lets out a distorted scream and leaps at the beast. He moves so fast. I can't believe he was dying a moment ago. That might have been a poor decision on your part there, Arakune. The beast snatches him out of the air and in one smooth movement buries its razor-sharp teeth in Arakune's body. It tears off a piece and... it's eating him. I can't do anything. I can't even move. The alternate truth is yet to be found. Well, that was a very terrifying ending. But of course, as we all know, uh, thanks to the power of Takamagahara, things will eventually uh, reset themselves. And on that note, um, well, uh, it is time to end this episode of Let's Play Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. And when we return to Ventures, we shall press on to the uh, true ending of Iron Tager's story, Blind Warrior. As always, Adventurers, until next we meet. <laughs>